Um, hey, this is Kirby Master, commentating over my personal best for Metroid Prime 2 any percent. This is a time this run is a time of one hour eighteen minutes in game time. And the record as of now is one hour three minutes by miles, and I'll get into explaining why there's a huge fifteen minute difference between us. I do not claim this is a top quality run, but I do I am doing this commentary primarily to pretty much give additional insight on how I felt throughout the run and maybe for other runners to maybe benefit from this commentary for people who want to run prime to any percent. So um the in game timer runs the in game timer runs any time you have control over Samus. So text boxes, cutscenes, elevators well, elevators with cutscenes, they do not count towards in game time. So like this cutscene right here does not count. Alright, so uh, I'm gonna just pretty much talk about what's going on in the run right now. So basically, um, if you're not familiar with Prime 2 and the any percent, any percent means beat the game as fast as possible at all costs. So I'm going to be doing a trick here, which is the most broken trick in the entire game. And um, this is abbreviated ILS. It's the acronym for uh, Item Loss Skip. So at the very beginning of the game, you're intended to pretty much go through a room where you kind of get knocked into a portal and you get mobbed by ing and you lose your items. So you start with like no upgrades pretty much. However, with this trick I'm going to do here, um, I'm, I get to skip that. I get to go around that by going out of bounds. This lets me start the game essentially with space jump, boost ball, spider ball, missiles, and bombs, which completely breaks the game by the way. So that's, this was found I roughly two and a half or three years ago. I don't know the entire story about how it's found, but I do suggest, recommend that if you want to learn this trick. It's a very easy trick, at least getting out of bounds in the first place. Miles has a very good annotated t video, for, a tutorial video on how to do this. So, right here, what you see me doing is the setup for ILS, which is um, infinite speed glitch. Basically, the game thinks I'm inside the room with the bugs back there right now. Uh, and then by morphing right here, I can kind of get stuck, and by holding a certain direction, I can constantly constantly roll and I can constantly gain more and more speed and once my speed hits a certain threshold like right there I enter this weird magic state that no one understands anything about and this is the infinite speed bug right here so by boosting into crates like right there what happens is you pretty much activate every trigger in the room kind of by chance and by doing that I activate the cutscene where Samus jumps down a cliff from a different spot in the game and this warps me out of bounds here so right now the game thinks I'm playing a cutscene right now and now I'm out of bounds. So this lets me pretty much, this is what lets me do ILS. Um, the crash it leads to a lot of resets because like, I, because boosting into crates roughly has a 50% 50, 50 chance of working because um, you're found by miles. Um, your speed value toggles between two values every frame. So the moment you boost, it depends on which, one, which of the two values it is. One of them works, one of them doesn't. Um, so it's essentially a 50-50 chance of it working, disregarding crashes. There is a chance that the game can crash. So that also leads to a lot of resets. So okay, so basically what I did here is I'm getting back in bounds here, and I guess I'll go through the concepts of out of bounds in a bit once once I go over this upcoming trick here, because there's a lot of stuff that happens at the beginning of this run. So um, the main reason I come back in bounds is to get this E tank here. And energy tanks are really valuable in Prime 2 because a big reason why Prime 2 is notoriously difficult to speedrun is because one of the biggest reasons is, is the Dark World. Like more I'd probably say the Dark World is the bigger reason why Prime 2 is harder than e the, even the Secret World itself. Because you skip Dark Suit, but I'll get into that later. Right here I just did a ghetto jump off the tree to land on that rock and I can jump into this gap right here and get out of bounds again. So by getting out of bounds again, that means I can wall crawl to, I believe the room is named Dynamo Chamber, I forgot the exact name. And then there's a power bomb tank right inside of there. So basically I'm going to go over to that room and get the power bomb tank within 5 minutes of the game. And this, this power bomb tank, um, with the route I use, it's not insanely useful, but it's one of the most significant breaks overall, especially before ILS was discovered. So. Yeah, I got a powerbomb tank right there, and now what I'm going to do is, you're intended to go straight to the Great Temple to get Violet Translator, and the Missile Launcher too. So some, so easier routes get Violet Translator early, and it's valuable because you can do a trick called a 101% trick, where you get the Missile Launcher by skipping a cutscene, 
and then by activating the cutscene, the missile launcher appears again. So, do getting Violet early lets you get the missile launcher twice really easily. But I'm not doing that though, so I'm, I'm going to be pretty tight on missiles early on. Because and overall, with the with with the grapple beam route, which I'll explain in a bit, late Violet saves the late Violet route, which you see right, which you're seeing right now, saves roughly one minute. So over getting Violet Translator early, but it adds a lot of wall crawls, so it's pretty, it's a difficult route overall. Alright, so right there, if, if you see next to the door, there's a Violet Translator door, so I need to wall crawl here to, yeah, pretty much get around it, so I can go to Akon without Violet Translator. And, okay, so this missile tank I'm getting here takes a chunk of time to get, and if you're doing early Violet Translator, then you should not get this missile tank, because you already have 15, maybe 20 going into Aegon because of the missile launcher trick. But I can't do that. I need this missile tank because there is no other missile tank that's convenient for me to get. And I need to blow up two super missile doors in a row the moment I enter Torvis. And I, there are no other missile tanks, so I need 10 missiles. Okay, so um, I mentioned something about the grapple beam route. Okay, I'm gonna explain that later because there's another major trick coming up here. But Right here, so I already have space jump and bombs, so an easier route is to go straight to Dark Beam right now by just inbounds. You can go straight to, because you already have space jumps, so you can go straight to the pirate base in Aegon and go around, fight a lot of pirates, and get Dark Suit, fight Dark Samus. Instead, I'm going to get out of bounds by abusing what's called, what we call the Sand Digger Secret World. So I blow up one head there to make sure it doesn't switch while I'm trying to manipulate it. Um, I'm kind of rolling around here to manipulate it so it kind of curves, and it, then it'll toss me through the wall right there. So I am now out of bounds again. What happens here is I get to pretty much skip all the pirate fights in the pirate base for Egon. And in addition, I'm sp it, originally when I go inbounds, I'm supposed to kind of go clock counterclockwise all the way around the base, but I can just cut straight to Dark Beam and go counterclockwise instead, clockwise instead, and go straight to Dark Samus. So while this wall crawl is going on. Oh yeah, some, one more thing. The disadvantage to doing Sand Digger, this saves around 2 minutes, but the disadvantage is that you lose some time later on because um, you skip out on a beam ammo expansion. There's an easy beam ammo expansion if you do the pirate base in bounds, and that sa saves a chunk of time, especially during Chica, and just makes life a lot easier. So I skip out on that. I also skip out on the second E-Tank that I just passed by for the beginning part of the game, but that's honestly not too big of a deal. So, alright. So I guess I'll go, go really quickly go over out of bounds mechanics really quickly. So um, every room is surrounded by a box, and what's outside of the box we call ether. Now right here is something I'm called doing ether jumping. What happens when you're inside ether is that you're kind of stuck in place. Well, you can walk around horizontally, but you're constantly floating up really, really slowly. So when you're walking out of the side of ether, then you have th a three-frame window where you can jump, and that is the generally the f fastest way to climb a room out of bounds. So so you want to pretty much ether jump out of ether, and then at the peak of your jump, go back into ether, and then do it again and repeat. So right here, I, I was able to walk on top of the box right there. The top of the box is something called a skywalk. So when you pretty much are unmorphed and you're on top of the box, you can just walk on top of it, pretty much. And one last thing, um, when you're on the bottom of the box, like I am here, you're technically inside ether. So every time I'm, so like whenever you want to jump from the bottom of the box, you have to wait for the ether to pop you out. Because remember, you're sl very slowly floating up constantly. So you have to wait for the ether to pop you up, and the moment it pops you up, you have an opportunity to jump, and then you can jump to the side into ether and start ether jumping like that. So I just that's and one more one last thing. I need to I'm constantly jumping on doors and such to tra do something called transitioning, which is basically telling the game, okay, I'm in this room now because you pretty much can't just skip rooms. You have to let the game know you're inside a room for the most part. So, yeah. This is this spot right here can crash. It's pretty much random, but it's very rare for it to crash. I've only had it crash on me twice. Um, one way to get back inbound is to let a room load around you. So you get to a room before it's fully loaded, and then let it load around you. So right here, I'm letting the room load around me, and I'm inside a cutscene trigger to trigger the Dark Samus fight. And, but but I have a power bomb, so I can just blow her up right there. It's kind of random that if she f if the game freezes or not, because the game can arbitrarily crash when you power bomb Dark Samus like that, and it, it sucks. But 
Um, that, but it didn't freeze, obviously. This is the run you see. So you can skip Dark Samus one, and it's not too hard. You can just go out of bounds and get Dark Beam instead of instead of letting the room load around you. So, but the reason why I kill Dark Samus is because you'll see soon, like after I get Light Beam and Ether Amber Translator, that there's a spider track in this room that I used, I think, three times throughout the run, and it saves a lot of time. That spider track is not activated until after I beat Dark Samus 1. So, that's the reason why you want, always want to fight Dark Samus 1 in, um, in any percent speed run, no matter what. Okay, so I'm going to go over this, the grapple beam route. I'm, this route, this game run uses the grapple beam route. I get grapple beam. The fastest route is to skip it, but that requires using a trick called Grand Abyss, which is a one-shot trick. And if you miss it, then you can never try it again, and the run is over, pretty much. And so I kind of never want to touch that, so I'm, using, I'm getting Grapple Beam. Alright, so right there is a Ghetto Jump. Okay, I never explained what a Ghetto Jump is, I'm sorry, but a Ghetto Jump is basically when you jump off of a slant and you gain extra heights. So that's the second time I used a Ghetto Jump, I believe. The first time was to get the early Power Bomb Tank. So I can get some height by leaning against the tree and then landing on a rock to get out of bounds. That ghetto jump, I ghetto jump against a corpse to get on top of um, a platform. Because what you're normally supposed to do is blow up a little head at the side of the platform and then activate it with dark beam and to lower it. But I'm just going to skip that. Alright, so right there you saw me walk past the safe station just a little bit. That, that hits the invisible loading trigger for the next room. Meaning the door here opens instantly. Um, if I did not do that, then that means I have to wait a few seconds for the door to open, which leads me to the next point, where a lot of times I do some weird thing, weird strategies where I do not use a strategy to reach the door as fast as possible. Instead, it's sometimes faster to use a strategy that hits the loading trigger as early as possible, but reaches the door more slowly. Because if you reach the door more quickly, but you hit the loading trigger later, then you have to wait for the door to open even longer. So there are some strats I use, and I will point them out whenever I can. So that was a pretty bad mistake right there. I wasn't fast enough in scanning the terminals, so I missed the cycle of platforms here. So, And you can scan this terminal right here from far away. You have to be near it when, when you start scanning it. Alright, so something I also never mentioned is something called a scan dash, where right there, that's a scan dash. To, it's basically a distance technique. When you, whenever you're locked onto, basically in Prime 2, whenever you're holding L and R at the same time in human form, you maintain your horizontal velocity for the most part. This means that if you keep your lock on on something and and then dash, and then hold R at, at the maximum speed of your dash, which is one fourth of a second right after you start the dash, then you'll maintain your dashing speed and you can go fast and far. So it's a pure distance technique and you, it's very useful overall. Alright, so right here the door is loading, so I'm staying inside the force field too, I can heal a little bit. And one last thing to go over while there's still, while a lot of this is self-explanatory, um, drops in this game. This game gives you drops based off of what you have. And this, and this game is very nice about it, unlike Metroid Prime 1. So I'll give an example, if you're at zero power bombs, then the next thing you blow up will almost always give you a power bomb drop. If you're at zero missiles, you're almost guaranteed to get a double missile drop. And if you're at 20% HP or lower, then you're almost guaranteed to get a yellow energy, which heals you 100. So like, I abuse that. So, so, so occasionally, if you're like just above 20% HP in a Dark Bolt, you're better off taking a little bit more damage and then blowing up an ink cache or some ink pot or something so you can get a yellow energy. All right. Um, coming up, so, there's a spider ball track that I mentioned earlier, which is the reason why I fight Dark Samus, and you're going to see it used right here. That's the spider ball track right there. And yes, remember that I have spider ball because I skipped losing my items. The game says you start with grapple beam and power bombs, but the game's lying. Alright, so right there, Miles is the record holder for this game, and is by far the best player at this game. Shoutouts to Miles. I pass by a door that leads to Sanctuary Fortress. For Miles, he skips Grapple Beam, so he would go straight to Sanctuary Fortress. I don't, I get Grapple Beam, so that means I'm going to go to Torvis Bog. Get Grapple Beam as well as get the Torvis Key in Lower Torvis, and then go to Sanctuary Fortress. So, Right here as well, I'm getting Amber Translator. I don't need it to beat the game, and it is faster to skip it, but 
Um, skipping Amber Translator requires a really, really terrible trick called Hive Dash. Which, I mean, I don't, I don't really, I don't know 100% what happens with it, but basically you have to go out of bounds by scan dashing off of a War Wasp and then ba jumping backwards, and it's really precise. So, it's so like I don't use it, so I get the Amber Translator right here. Alright, also, um, you have to scan that terminal thingy twice, that hologram twice, because the game is confused between, about what state it's in right now. Because, like, that's the first time I've been here, but at the same time, I just got, like, Dark Beam and Light Beam, so the game wants to tell me, hey, you need to go get the keys and go fight in Morbus now. So the game's kind of confused between what state it's in, so that's why you, ha you have to scan it, the hologram twice. And my visual cue for it is to look for the little ball that surrounds the hologram and then scan it after the first try. The second try, we want to scan the little ball that goes around it. So. Alright, so. It if you got early Violet Translator, what you would do is go to Temple Grounds. Go to Great Temple, go to meet Meeting Grounds and Temple Grounds, and get Secret Missiles because it's on the way to Torvis. Then you would do a Ghetto Jump, that's basically a one-shot trick, in Abandoned Base, because there there's a trick there where you can skip a puzzle that requires Dark Suit, but if you mess it up, you die. And then you go to Torvis. So I'm going to skip all that because I don't have Violet Translator. I can't take that path. Plus, this is a lot faster. This is kind of faster. So what I'm going to do is use Sand Digger again to get out of bounds. Um, and then I'm going to wall crawl straight to Torvis. So right here is a kind of an awkward tra room transition here because um, there is no spot for me to ether jump that's near the door. So what I have to do instead is um, the b bottom of the box for this room with the save station is lower than the room I'm currently in. So I can ether jump off the bottom of the of the mining plaza and get up to next to the door and then do a bomb jump to reach the top of the door and then transition it. I was supposed to do a scan dash in a while out of bounds to move more quickly here but I missed it so I lost a little bit of time there. So right here I'm waiting for the game to pop me out of the bottom of the box and I got it and now I'm either jumping to the top of this door. So a really nice thing about this route I'm using is that I don't have to deal with abandoned base. I don't have to deal with dark suits with, with dark suit skip and abandoned base because that kills a lot of runs if you mess up a ghetto jump. But the bad part about this route is um, it adds a lot of extra wall crawls and um, secret missiles are a really annoying detour. So, yeah, I think I made a mistake right here, or my yeah, I made a, I made a pretty significant mistake here. So if you noticed, there's the previous room is still loaded. Uh, when I did that jump, I, I jumped in a way so I would hit the unloading trigger for the room with the save station. So I would unload it, and then that means that the elevator to Torvis will load. But I missed it, so I have to redo this here, and that wastes a lot of time. And that was a pretty bad mistake there. So I hit the alone loading trigger this time, and I'm letting the room load around me. And now I'm back in bounds. And now I can go to Torvis. So again, just, I'm, again, the moment I arrive in Torvis, I'm blocked by a secret missile door. So I'm going to do... A BSJ. BSJ stands for a bomb space jump. And what ha happens with this, what happens is that um, when you're in Morph Ball, your state is stored in a variable. <laughs> and the first 22 frames, you go airborne in Morph Ball. Your state changes to, let's say, X. If your X is actually the same state as Sam is standing in human form. So if you get an instant unmorph within those 22 frames, and then that press B. The game thinks you're standing on ground in, per in person, therefore you can jump out of it as if you're on the ground, and then you can do a space jump. So what I did back there was a 3 BSJ, which is a triple bomb jump, and then I unmorphed it within 22 frames, and then I was able to get a lot of heights. The same trick is pretty much the same thing as a roll jump. The roll jump uses the same mechanic, except it's another distance technique, where I roll off a ledge, and then within 22 frames I unmorph, and I get to jump while maintaining momentum from rolling. So that was really sloppy because that pirate, I was in a, one, I was at a wrong angle to shoot that grounded pirate, and two, the pirate was trolling me. And these flying pirates are really trolling me too, so this was a really, really bad um, pirate fight. So I lost a lot of time here as well. Um, so, the moment you kill the two flying pirates and the one grounded pirate, the game warps you back here, which is very, very convenient. <laughs> 
so you don't I don't have to worry about like, getting back in pounds manually and stuff so um you, you also get to see the power of dark beam here so um, dark and light beam are absurdly powerful like they are really powerful like I believe I believe dark a normal dark shot on an enemy weak to dark beam aka space pirates and flying pirates it does the same amount of damage as a missile so two normal dog shots kills a normal pirate. Three shots kills a flying pirate. So yeah. Um, I forgot to switch to power beam here, that's why I unmorphed. Because I need to blow up two super missile doors in a row. And previously I mentioned that I need ten missiles to blow up two super missile doors in a row. And this is the spot here. Okay, so after you get super missiles, what you're intended to do is, well, get go get boost ball. Then go back to Temple Grounds, get Secret Missiles, and then go to Lower Torvis and do a bunch of puzzles down there. Because you're supposed to have Secret Missiles to do pretty much do anything in Lower Torvis. Um, but, well, one, I have Boost Ball already. And two, that actually doesn't really matter because I'm going to do these tricks called Underwater Dashes and skip all those puzzles. So, an Underwater Dash is basically whenever you, if you're underwater without gravity's boost, you hold L, then you press B and R at the same time, and you hold R, then you Move, as if you time it right, you move really fast underwater. So there's three scanning terminals in this room, and you're not supposed you're only supposed to be able to reach them from behind, aka come out from the door behind them. But instead I'm going to do these underwater dashes to go for them. Unfortunately, I missed that underwater dash. I jumped too early for that, so I bumped my head and I fell all the way back down. So that lost around a half minute, and that was a really bad mistake. And I kinda kinda flustered here, so I lost more time trying to get re reoriented. So I'm kind of jumping repeatedly here because I didn't get the dash, but right there I got the dash. And of course you can't scan these terminals from behind, from like the center of the room. You have to actually be behind them to be able to scan them, or right next to them. So yeah, I lost a lot of time because, you know, I missed the first dash. I'm kind of disoriented here. But thankfully I got the dash first try, like second try. It would have been pretty disastrous and I probably would have reset if I missed it again. Okay. Um, and now there's one more scan terminal and this one you don't really have to do anything special for. I'm, I was trying to do some underwater dashes there because it's faster than just jumping. Alright, so I pretty much skipped all the puzzles around here. I pretty much delayed getting secret missiles, skipped a detour. So now I'm gonna go all the way down and get gravity boost because gravity boost is it saves a lot, it saves time, and it's not really too far, it's not really out of the way. So I get gravity boost. You can skip it, but it's not really out of the way and it saves time. So right after you get okay, so the game is black here for a long time because the game is reloading the previous room right now. So the game waits for the previous room to reload with alpha blog until. And once it's done loading, then it shows you the cutscene. You got gravity boost, which is why the door opens instantly because the room's already fully loaded. So right here, um, what happens when you beat this boss is that there's a lower platform that appears, and you can use that to climb out of this room. But instead, I'm just going to do a BSJ and get out of this room quickly. And unfortunately, the alpha block kind of trolled me and knocked me lower when the moment he hit me, so I have to redo this BSJ. A safer strat to do this room is to just wait for him to dash at you and then do the BSJ, but I kind of, I almost always just kind of yolo it, and, um, unfortunately it didn't really pay off this time. I kill those bugs, c fish, not, not bugs, fish, so I can get missile drops, health drops, and light beam. And also, mainly because this next part of the, of the game is pretty health intensive, because, as I said, I don't have dark suit, so health is pretty, is a pretty big issue. So, um, I'm going to fight main power, the Power Bomb Guardian, and I already have a Power Bomb expansion. The reason why I fight Power Bomb Guardian is because um, there's a Sky Temple Key in Aegon Waste that does not appear until after you get the main Power Bomb, which is really stupid. So this is the only reason I fight him. And I have Spider Ball ready, so I can fight him. Now, a technique I used right there is something called a Sticky Boost. If you're hanging off the edge of a Spider Ball track and you boost while holding that direction, then you can kind of just boost across for some neat shortcuts and such. So this fight is pretty much straightforward. The first sticky boost is pr it's pretty much random whether you can make it up to the top track or not. And unfortunately, I got it first try both times, so that kind of so that kind of saves time a little bit. Also, you kind of see the morph ball 
every time I use a spider ball track, you see me kind of wiggling. And that's because I'm mashing R, which I don't exactly 100% know why it works, but pretty much in Prime 1 and 2, whenever you mash R while going across the spider track, you move a little bit faster. So it saves a little bit of time. So that's Fire Bomb Guardian right there. Pretty easy. So, and right here, for some reason, um, when you're in Morphed, after certain bosses, then all the drops are attracted to you. This applies to Grapple Guardian as well, so you'll see me morph after I beat Grapple Guardian. So I can attract all the drops. It's just kind of weird. So that's the main power bomb tank, and now the Sky Temple Key has appeared in Aegon Wastes, and yeah. So now what I'm going to do is Pretty much, I already have a power bomb, so you're not supposed to be able to take this path here. You're supposed to pretty much go back to left egg Torvis and then take all these random detours and stuff. But instead, since I already have a power bomb, I can just blow this up here and skip all those detours through light lower Torvis and go straight to, and go straight to Grapple Guardian. So right here, I could have boosted, but <laughs> I've had a lot of bad experiences when I boosted off of that. AKA, I fell down many times. Whenever I tried boosting, so I always rolled there safely. <laughs> so. so right here, I stop and grab some drops, because one, I want light ammo for Grapple Guardian. And two, I want health. And three, I don't really lose time, because as long as I just cross the center of that tunnel, I hit the loading trigger for this room. So the room with Grapple Guardian is loading, so I don't really lose time. Now, I scan Grapple Guardian here because you can't tart lock on his eye until after you scan him. So, you want basically the pattern is pretty straightforward. He'll, you stun him with three, with three uncharged light shots, use a charged light shot plus two uncharged on his back, he'll try to grapple you, let him grab you, then stun him with one shot, then shoot his back, and then do the same thing as you did at the beginning. Shoot his eye three times, then shoot his back. And that's the first phase, and I scan him here because I'm bored. I power bomb the crate there because um, it blocks off the dark beam door after the fight, and I'm waiting for Grapple Guardian anyways. So I'm waiting for his animation to start the second phase. Now the second phase, basically, you what you want to do is stand close to him so he tries to do a melee attack on you, and while he attacks you, you can shoot his eye three times and then finish him off with a charged light beam shot plus uncharged. I kind of missed that, so he tried to grapple me. And in the second phase, if he grapples you, you don't want to stun him. If you do, then you can't shoot his eye for some reason. He just stands there stunned for like several seconds and you can't hurt him for some reason. So if he grapples you, th then you want him to hit you. To pretty much cut that animation short. Unless you're about to die, then well, you don't want to do that. Alright, so power bomb management is pretty important in this next part here because I'm going to Sanctuary now, and I and since I have Power Bombs and Spider Ball, I can do that. So, um, I'm basically going to blow up three Power Bomb doors in a row. So, I have to make sure I have w at least one Power Bomb going to the elevator to Sanctuary. Alright, so there's a bomb slot that's below the portal. I'm gonna go underwater and go activate it now. And this unlocks the portal, and the reason I do this is because um, I need to use this portal during Sky Temple Key Cleanup, because I need to use the portal to go to the dungeon, which is a dark version of this room, which is called the Catacombs, and then get the Sky Temple Key there. So, yeah. And in this room with water here, when you're in more ball, there's an energy tank here. It's probably... I don't get it, but if I were to get one more E-Tank in the game, this would be the one I would get. But I don't get it anymore. So there's a trick here, a minor speed trick here that I missed, where what I want to do is after watching this cutscene, of course, I kind of want to jump around the corner and do an instant morph and immediately cling to the spider track. Unfortunately, I didn't curve around the corner enough, so I missed it, so I have to kind of do this part here. Now another speed trick here, you can, you can boost off the corner of that spider track and land right on a statue. My personal visual cue for that is boost the moment you see Samus turn, pretty much. And I get this missile tank because it's basically free. So this is the first of three power bomb doors I have to blow up. And I that's this is actually the first time I made that cycle of platforms. I was pretty amazed by that actually. So I have grapple beam. 
and a lower Torvis key, so now I'm going to go to Sanctuary and get Screw Attack. Um, you want to, the pretty much the top priority in the main game is to return the Sanctuary energy because to get Light Suit, the game only checks if you return the energy for Sanctuary. So that's pretty much like the, the main goal for the first part of the game. And you Dark Beam one hit KOs these guys, but if you do use Dark Beam, they only get two drops rather than eight. So you want to use Power Beam for that. And again, as I mentioned, if you're at zero power bombs, the game almost always gives you a power bomb drop. So I almost always get a power bomb drop for those little guys. And same with the turrets. The turrets should almost always give you a power bomb drop. And again, I'm showing off the power of Dark Beam. Because it's very powerful. Alright, so this is an energy tank that I could skip. But I get it, because there's a trick coming out that requires a lot of energy, and I can't do it fast enough with only 4 energy tanks. Like, I ultimately have 5 energy tanks in by endgame, but... If I were to skip one more energy tank, it will be this one. But I'm not, I'm not gonna skip it anytime soon. So yeah, there's a, like, a long spider track puzzle you're supposed to do, that for, do for that E tank, but you can just do what I did. Do a triple bomb jump, cling to the spider ball track, unmorph at the top, get on those glass tunnel, and then jump to the side of the energy tank. The puzzle for this is always the same. It's always um, green, blue, red, yellow. No, sorry, yellow, blue. <laughs> I don't. I never remember the colors. It's yellow. I just remember the positioning. It's yellow, blue, red, green, or amber, cobalt, crimson, emerald. And that's alphabetical order. So if that's one way you want to memorize the order, then it's alphabetical order with those four names. So you can memorize that if you want. And you're supposed to go to the Dark World to be able to reach Upper Sanctuary, but I have Spider Ball already, so screw that. Alright, so an upcoming trick coming up, which is one of the biggest mistakes in the run, um, it's called Gyro Skip. It's another wall crawl I, I do. I got, well first of all I got Dark Beam ammo here, because I need it for respites. So these quads are very annoying, and they mess me up a lot. So what happens is, if I just enter the Dark World and immediately go back to the Light World, then... Um, it, it pretty much removes the mini quads. So. That makes the trick upcoming trick a lot easier. And also you can't move forward there because there's actually a wall on the outside. You're not supposed to be able to come through the light portal this way until you unlock that wall. So what happens here is, I have to make sure first that the game thinks I'm in the previous room. So if you want pay attention to the map at the top right corner, the game thought I was in the... Pre uh, the game still thinks I'm in the big huge room in Spider Guardian. And then uh, what my personal... I'm supposed to hold a certain direction. And then immediately unmorph so I can land in the ether of the next room. Because the next room's box is very slow, whereas this room's box is very big. Unfortunately, for some reason, I derped and pulled the wrong direction, so uh, I fell all the way down. I like, Not all the way down, but I fell a sizable chunk down this big room, so I had to either jump all the way back up, and that loses a lot of time. So the entire point of this wall crawl is that in, a, in the main gyro chamber, the only way to get to the, across the watch station access is to stop the gyro. Um, and by stopping the gyro, I have access to the other side of the room that has a boost slot. But by going out of bounds, I could just let the room load around me while I'm on the other side and activate the boost slot. So that skips stopping the gyro and saves a lot of time, assuming you don't fall down, which I did. But I still ultimately save time over not doing it. So that's the boost slot right there that I activated. And I touched the door to transition the room to make the game think I'm in back in this room correctly. But this is one of the biggest sequence breaks in the game, hands down. This skips a bunch of stuff. Like, this skips a crap ton of stuff. You're, to get Screw Attack, you have to pretty much get Echo Visor, which requires a bunch of other stuff with power bombs and stuff. Fight a mini boss, go all the way around the Upper Sanctuary, and come on the other side of this room. But I just skipped all of that with that roll jump. So, and this is one of the earlier tricks found, and it's one of the biggest sequence breaks in the game, period. Like, even to this day, it is one of the biggest sequence breaks in the game, besides ILS, of course. So right here, I have Spider Ball, so I can do the Spider Track Spider Ball puzzle normally, but this is obviously a lot faster and cooler. So I use, I jump backwards, blind, and use an instant morph into the bomb slot, and that's the way you get Screw Attack early back in the days where you don't start the game with Spider Ball. So um, I mentioned the trick called Grand Abyss. Um, if you were doing Grapple Boom Skip, you would not come to the Dark World. You would just go straight to the light version of the room coming up, 
and do Grand Abyss. So this room right here, the light version of this room is called Grand Abyss. And what you're supposed to do is do a scan dash off of a robot in the distance, land on another robot, and then ride it. But that robot never comes back. You, even reloading a room doesn't make it come back. Now, I got pretty pissed off here because uh, I locked onto a puffer and the puffer trolled me, so I fell down. Um, that lost a lot of time there. And that's why you, that's how you skip grapple beam because the dark version of this room requires grapple beam to get across for the most part. All right, so there's another trick in this room called defaults, where pretty much I can skip using the dark portal and do a scan dash to immediately reach one of the boost slots. I suck at the dash so badly that I'm better off just taking the slow path. Unfortunately, I do want to eventually learn it, but it's a really annoying and hard dash for me. So I just, I just take the slow path. And so, basically, I could probably save like 20 30 seconds of in game time if I didn't, if I learned that dash. And probably more RTA time, but we don't really go by real time. This is pretty self-explanatory, I just go around the boost slots. I kill these two res bits because they get in the way, and yeah, they really get in the way. Because I go back and forth this part here. I probably wouldn't have to kill them if I did the vault dash, but I didn't do it, so. You get to see a little bit of optimization to move around pretty quickly. I, did, I do a few dashes and a roll jump to move around this room quickly. So for some reason, you always get an instant morph if you morph anywhere near the boost slot, which is kind of nice, I guess. So yeah, that was, that was this was by my standards, this was pretty well optimized. I got all, I pretty much got all the dashes, and I was able to move around the room pretty quickly. So right here, you you can just this dash is really easy. You just have to touch the bridge or something, or get close to it, and the game spawns you back in the center. So it's a pretty easy trick. So now I got Screw Attack, which is one of the most overpowered weapon upgrades in the game, and it is absolutely amazing. So something to know about Screw Attack. Um, screw Attack is modeled after the size of Morph Ball. So whenever you Screw Attack, you are the size of Morph Ball. So you can get into Morph Ball slots and stuff. And when you're done Screw Attacking, obviously you get out of Morph Ball. So you see where I'm going with this, right? You can get maybe get into a corner and then you automatically unmorph, or you get into a morph ball tunnel and you un unmorph, and you can clip out of bounds. So most out of bounds in this game are thanks to screw attack. So okay, this is the last E tank I get, and I get the E tank here because um, I want this is a this is a health refill. I I want this health refill as late as possible because this upcoming trick uses a lot of health because I'm going and this upcoming trick is a notorious quadraxa skip um, I'm going to be skipping annihilator beam I'm going to be skipping annihilator beam um, and to do that I go out of bounds and I pretty much wall crawl around quadraxis but it's entirely in a dark world and I don't have dark suit so it burns away a lot of health um, at minimum without at minimum, in a standard any percent route, you need three E tanks to do Quadraxis skip. I mean, there's a glitch you can do to do Quadraxis skip with zero with zero E tanks called Morph Ball Invincibility, but that's not applicable at all in a speedrun. So, but I mean, I can't. But like, three E tanks is barely enough to get past it, and I I'm not I'm not comfortable with doing it with four, so I you go with five. Um, there's also a faster way to reach the dark world here. I could have gone out of bounds earlier and gotten into a portal that's already an upper sanctuary, and that would have been a lot faster, but it's also tricky. And uh, chances are I would lose more time doing that than taking the safe way. So. 
Your quadricep skip has killed very many runs. Well, because I usually I mess it up a lot out of nerves because I it's like one of the most nerve wracking things in Prime Two. Because like if you mess up too much, you're dead, and it's a trick that lasts for minutes. So like it's it's just like a lot of stress stuff like spread out, and it's really stressful. And I just get really nervous. So. Um, and I screw attack these night barbs because it's the nice, best way to get through this room, and they give me a lot of drops. And I want health drops, so that light door takes a little bit of time to load, so I don't lose as much time. But I mean, I do lose time for getting these drops, but I want as much health as possible, so I will take it safe. All right, so I'm going to do a three BSJ here. Get get on top of a standable spot in this hole in the ceiling and move across the wall there, then transition to room here. This transition is pretty tricky to get and it's kind of hard to explain, but if you want to figure out how to do that transition, you can probably ask me. So I went back to the door because again, I didn't transition to room properly, so I had to kind of redo it. So right here I got pretty lucky. The game gave me a red drop. It That's the first time it's ever happened to me. It's always given me a small drop. So that was a nice extra four seconds. The game drains your health at a rate of six HP per second without dark suit. So so right here, now, this is more most nerve-wracking part in the, in the, the skip because I have to ether jump all the way up to the skywalk of the room with Quadraxis. So like if I mess up too many ether jumps then I have no chance of making it across. And now I'm on the skywalk so I'm gonna walk across the top of the room. And I'm going to do a trick that I never mentioned called the ceiling warp. So um, the main, there's two main ways to get it back in bounds. And the, and the number one way you see me do it is getting into a room before it finishes loading, so that the room loads around me. The other alternative way to do it is a ceiling warp, which is basically if you're on a, if you're on top of some kind of ceiling in a room that's loaded, but the game's transition on a different room, then you bomb. You, you can do a bomb jump. And then right after you land from the bomb jump, you unmorph, and you maintain the speed from falling down from the bomb jump, and you warp through the ceiling. The reason why this happens is because um, when you're standing on a sticky surface, you're still technically in the air. That's why you can't st st jump from a sticky surface while out of bounds. So if you morph at that spot and you bomb jump, you're, st you're technically falling while on a st sticky surface. So by unmorphing, you kind of maintain that vertical velocity and you just kind of warp through and break through, and that's what you saw me do at the first part of Cortex Skip. So this is the second part, and this is a lot less stressful. Um, you can just clip out of bounds by using a screw attack. And I wait here a little bit because one, I can heal a little bit, and two, I need to wait for the quadrax quadraxis room to load anyway. So I do a quick ether jump here to get on the top of the door. So I can transition it, and then jump back into the ether. And I walk around to the side this time. Something to note, um, skipping Quadraxis does save a, t a lot of time. It saves around 2 minutes, roughly. But but that's mainly because you skip a boss. And you would expect it to save a lot more time than that, but the main reason it doesn't save as much time is because Annihilator Beam uh, unlocks a shortcut. Well, one reason is there's a shortcut in this room. The light version of this room is a short, really useful shortcut after you return to Sanctuary Energy. Um... So I guess that saves a chunk of time right there, being able to use Annihilator Beam to use that shortcut. And another reason is because Annihilator Beam is absurdly powerful, so it's very useful against Chica Larva and um, Emperor One. It, it saves a lot of time against them. So like Annihilator Beam does save time at certain parts of the game, but of course, ultimately, skipping more drafts is, is faster. So I do it. So I'm done. I got the Sanctuary Energy and now I'm going to go ahead and return it. So, something to note, grapple beaming is faster than screw attacking. Like, it's fa grappling is faster than screw attacking, so just something to note there. And I've already scanned the terminal here on my first trip, second trip through this room, so I can just roll into the hologram there. 
And this mini quad here, you want to take this mini quad coming up. You always want to take out its legs first, because this specific mini quad or whatever it's called, if you leave, if you kill the head, but you leave the legs alive, then it will summon another head instantly. Now, for some reason, it didn't use its it didn't use it, like one of its attacks to that makes it vulnerable. So that was pretty stupid. So that took a little bit of time. But yeah, you always want to kill the legs first because it can sum it'll always summon another head if you kill the head first. So um, there's gonna be there's a hologram in Sanctuary Energy Controller, and I can get Cobalt Translator, but I don't need it. There's no place where I ever need it, so I skip completely skip it. You do need Cobalt Translator to fight Spider Garden if you don't want to do Spider Garden skip, but of course I skip Spider Garden, so I don't get I don't bother with Cobalt Translator. So I've returned to energy, and now I can go ahead and get Light Suit. So right here, there's a lot of route diversions. Um, route differences depending on whether one whether you skipped or got grapple beam and two um, whether you got vi or you got valid translate already or you're getting it late so um, what miles does is he skips grapple beam and does late violet so what he has to do is he can't go back to Torvis and he can't go back to sanctuary either so he so like he has to go back no he can't okay so he can't go to Torvis you can't go back to Temple Grounds via Sanctuary, and you can't go back to Temple Grounds via Aegon either. So, what he has to do is he has to go to Aegon, then go to Torvis via Aegon, and then go back to Temple Grounds, which is a very really annoying detour for him. For this route I'm using here, it's really convenient for me because I've been to Torvis before. I've unlocked, I've pretty much unlocked all everything in Torvis, and I'm, I'm able to go to Torvis from Sanctuary. So what you see me doing is going to Torvis, and then going to Temple Grounds. Um, if I got early Violet Translator, but I got Grapple Beam, then what I would do is faster to go back through Aegon, because Aegon's going back through Aegon's faster than going back through Torvis. But I, of course I can't do that because the elevator from Aegon to T Temple Grounds is blocked off by a Violet Gate, so I can't go back through that way. There's another f free missile tank here that I get, so. So, there really isn't much else to explain, because, well, the main, the first half of the game is done, which is the much more exciting part of the game. Unfortunately, the second half is not really as interesting. So there really isn't much to say. <laughs> um, random thing, um, I believe Miles explained to me that in this room right here, I kind of activated triggers in a wrong way. So there's a crap ton of alpha blocks, in, not alpha blocks, um, blocks in this room. There's four of them. There's only supposed to be two. And there's some kind of um, room state changes going on in there because I activated cutscenes in some weird kind of um, order, but yeah, whatever. So I've never been through this door before, and there's a missile tank right in front of it. So again, it's, it's, another, it's another essentially free missile tank that I get, and I will need it. Alright, so something to explain. Um, in Upper Torvis, in, in some specific rooms, there's a chance that p Dark Pirate Commanders will appear, and they're activated by getting Grapple Beam, so we nicknamed them Grapple Pirates. They suck, because when they appear, they lock the door, and the doors do not unlock until after you've either killed them, or you wait an entire minute. Waiting a minute is not obviously not an option in speedrun, so you have to kill them, and they can really troll you, because sometimes missiles will just bounce off of them arbitrarily and stuff. The best way to kill them is with a charged dark shot plus a missile, which is why you see me charging my dark beam, because this is one of the rooms where grapple pirates can appear. Fortunately, they did not, so 
I didn't lose time here. Alright. So, I've never used this elevator before because I came to Torvis via Aegon, so I have to scan it and stuff. Okay, so there's the Amber Translator door right here. Um, that, that this this Translator door is the reason I get Amber Translator. That's the only reason I get it. The previous room, there's some more wasps. The only way to get the main way to get around it is something called Hive Dash, which I explained, which is what you do. So you scan dash off, you get on top of a hive, and you scan dash off of a wasp, and then jump backwards and get into the ether before activating Terminal Fall. And it's terrible. Like it is absolutely terrible. So like that is the reason why I get Amber Translator. So okay, so right here, this is the, this is where I lose time over getting early Violet Translator. Late Violet, early Violet Translator already got Seeker missiles because they get Seeker missile. The route gets Seeker missiles on the way from Aegon to Temple Grounds to Torvis, but I skipped the Temple Grounds part, so I'm getting Seeker missiles now because it's kind of on the way back. So and the puzzle for Seeker missiles is always the same. Going going clockwise, it's always one one three two. And secret missiles fortunately gives you an extra five missiles, which is very nice. So the reason why you get secret missiles, they are not required to beat the game at all. But there's two main reasons you get secret missiles. Um. The number one reason, I, off the top of my head, the number one reason is Sky Temple Keys. In Temple Grounds, all three Sky, okay, two of the three Sky Temple Keys are blocked off by secret missiles, secret missile doors. And the third one, and to get to um, the Sky Temple, it's blocked off by another secret missile door. So you can wall crawl around them, but that takes forever. The other reason is Chica. Light, the light phases of Chica, you have, he has four wings, and each of them takes two missiles each. If you have secret missiles, you can finish each light phase in two rounds. But if you don't have secret missiles, you have to take four rounds. Destroying one wing at a time rather than hitting all four wings with one missile and then all four wings with one missile again. Okay, so I destroyed a hive here because these wasps have killed two runs. And I touched the translator door here because that loads the elevator. Now that translator door, um, I'm doing this wall crawl because that translator, I can't go through that translator door. I have Amber Translator. But I can't go through it because that translator door is actually a violet translator door. Which is really stupid. Now this is one of the biggest mistakes in the, in the run right here. I fell down because I overshot landing on the branch. You always want to land on the left side of the branch. So I kind of so got a little bit um, flustered here and messed up a lot. But I recovered okay I guess. You want to do a 3 BSJ land on this branch here. Then get on top, get on the tip of the branch here. And then screw attack since there's no actual physical wall here, so I can screw attack into the next room, which is the elevator. I'm going to bonk off the side of the elevator and land inside the room. I personally always get scared here, because sometimes I feel like I'm not going to land in the room. And the problem with screw attack is something about ether while wall crawling. When you're out of bounds, um, if you're morphed, you fall infinitely until you unmorph. If you Remember, screw attacking has a, is the same like physics or something, model as morph ball. So if you screw attack out of bounds into ether, you're, pun intended, you're screwed. Because you're just going to keep falling and falling and falling, and you're, you're done. Okay, so that right there is a morph secret world. The game thinks I'm in the elevator room. And this transition was absolute hell. Because I, I tried it before, Miles had a lot of trouble with it. But fortunately, Miles found a very consistent setup for this transition right there. And what the, con con what the transition is, is pointing at the left center cor edge corner of a red um, hexagon thingy in the on the wall then kind of move backwards as you, you kind of fall down very slowly until it's pointing at the very bottom left corner 
and then you morph and hold upright and then you unmorph and you will always get the transition first try um do you need to do that wall crawl because um you're not supposed to be able to go in that way you're supposed to go out of that way so that means that there's a block that's blocking my way and the way to move that block is to hit the dark crystal with light beam but that's on the other side i can't reach it so i have to get around it by going out of bounds again So, okay, so the first time I moved backwards was to get Violet Translator. Because I don't need Violet Translator, but it does save time. It does help. Even later, even during Sky Temple Key. And then I get Light Suit. So now it begins the not as exciting part of the game. So, Sky Temple Key Collection. You cannot get a single Sky Temple key until you have Dark Visor. You cannot damage the Sky Temple caches, whatever, I forgot what they're called. You can't damage them, you can't see them, you can't do anything to them until you have Dark Visor. Um, and again, I have to scan this three times this time because of the game being confused about this, what state it's in. Okay, and another thing is, um, most Sky Temple keys you cannot get until you have Light Suits. So I believe five or six of the Sky Temple keys you can't get without light suits because like you can't enter, like, um, Ink Swarm will kill you instantly, uh, and you can't you and in the dark, the dark water, there's actually I believe there's actually an invisible there's like an actual floor on it until you get light suit you can't physically go into it, so it's actually not really the damage that's the issue for those specific dark water Sky Temple keys it's the fact that you can't even go inside it until you get light suit. So, the, again, the top priority is to get Light Suit, and now my next priority is to get Dark Visor. And to do that, I need, I need to fight Chica. And to reach Chica, I need to get the three Dark t dark Temple Keys from Torvis. Fortunately, I've already gotten the lower Dark Torvis Key. So I don't I don't have to go to the lower Torvis to get to Chica. I only have to get the two Sky Temple, not Sky Temple Keys, um, Dark Torvis Keys in Upper Torvis. Now, okay, this upcoming room, there's a chance for grapple parts to appear, and they have appeared, so I have to kill them. Fortunately, this didn't waste too much time. But, like, they can really screw you over with lock-ons and stuff, so it really trolls you. So, this this wasn't too big. This wasn't too bad. It could have been much worse, so I was not too peeved about that. So, you can kind of skip all the platforming by just screw attacking here. And you can skip going all the way around this room by jumping on these pipes here and then just climbing up quickly. So now I'm going to go to the dark world. And the moment I enter the dark world here, there's a chance that grab pirates can appear. And in almost every run they will appear because I go through this room twice. So like, there's two chances for them to appear. Fortunately, like the guy's thing is, um, once a grapple part, grapple parts have appeared in um, a room, they will never appear again in that room until you leave Torvis. So that's this. Is, I will always freeze, um, activate that center light beacon with light beam because a dark part, a grapple part will always appear there, so that instantly kills it. And the other one sometimes dashes into the other light beacon, so I always activate that too for a chance that he'll go in it. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Alright, so say hi to Boost Guardian, because, well, you're not going to see him anymore. Because I already have Boost Ball, so no need for that. You're, you can use Boost Ball to reach that. You can also just screw attack up here, and it's faster. So. I, so that's the second Dark Torvis key, and the third one is literally right outside of Dark Torvis Temple, so I can pretty much go straight to Chica now. And that was kind of a stupid mistake there. I, I pressed X before A, so I morphed before shooting the door. Pretty stupid mistake. Oh, something I never mentioned. So, most of the time I use a super missile, I pull up my scan visor. And what that does is it cancels the cooldown from the super missile. Because when you shoot a super missile, you can't do anything with your arm cannon for like, set, like, three, or, like three or four seconds. By pulling up scan visor and then bringing it back to combat visor, you can you pretty much cancel cancel the cooldown. 
So it saves time. And that's the last Dark Dwarf's key, so now I can go ahead and fight Chica. So Chica is one of the longest boss fights in the game, and it's pretty exciting and really difficult at the same time. And the hardest part of this fight is the fact that um, I have only 50 beam ammo. So this is where doing sand diggers kind of bites me in the ass because um, I'm, if I did if I didn't do sand digger at the beginning of the game with the Aegon pirate base, I would have 100 beam ammo and I would not be strained on beam ammo at all. But I only have 50, and Chica is a very ammo intensive fight. I need like pretty much every weapon at my disposal, and even every missile tank. I need pretty much every missile. So. So right here, I scan Chica, because um, you want to have him fully scanned before he jumps out of the water, because you can't lock onto his chest until he's fully scanned. So that was just kind of bad luck there. For some, I don't, I've never seen him um, do that really that quickly. Pretty much like dive in. He was also supposed to kind of pop out twice so I can hit him, but unfortunately that didn't really happen. So the reason why I use charged light beam shots is because it's my strongest form of damage. Like, it, the charged light beam does the most damage out of all four beams in terms of neutral damage. And I use dark beam to farm a little bit of light beam while waiting for Chica to pop up here. So first of all, I use dark beam here. Because it's faster than using power beam. And you can't really use missiles. You can use a super missile on his chest here, but spamming uncharged dark shot is faster. And I'm using light beam again to damage him little by little. And I'm gonna shoot these guys because I'm low on dark beam again. As again, I'm this is a very ammo intensive fight. And the reason I'm using light beam here now is because I want to conserve dark beam ammo. So yeah, and that finishes Chica Larva, and now begins the adult Chica fight, which is again very difficult but fun at the same time. So Chica light Chica. Okay, so Chica Larva is not weak to light or dark. Chica adult is weak to dark and light depending on which phase he's in. So obviously light chica is weak to dark and dark chica is weak to light. So charge dark beam shot. So in the first light round, a, a single charge dark beam shot will always stun him instantly. Unfortunately I missed that shot so I kind of stun him immediately again. The second light phase I believe he it takes more damage to, he takes more hits to stun. So you, you can't stun him anymore with only one charge dark shot. It takes a charge dark shot plus an uncharged I think. So I'm really low on ammo here, so I'm going to damage him a little bit and then wait for him to spawn chicklings, and that's where I can get a crap ton of ammo, and missiles too because I'm running more on missiles. So I'm going to wait for him to, I, I shoot him a little bit with Harvey here because I don't have anything else to do. I'm going to use Dark Beam first because I'm a lot lower in Light Beam, and then I'm going to farm a little bit of Dark Beam ammo. I kill all these chicklings. I spent a little, little bit of time killing them because I've lost. I've actually lost a run where a chicken blocked a secret missile like twice in a row, and that made turned um, a light chicka fight into like a light chicka two round into like four round or something. That was terrible. So I kill most of the chicklings there so they don't get in the way. So as I said, a charged dark beam shot does not stun him anymore. So I have to use a charged dark beam shot plus an uncharged. So that's check up. That's the third round, third phase down, and this one's kind of a pushover as well. So I'm I kind of I was really low on light ammo for some reason. So I'm kind of using <laughs> my beam, power beam, which is kind of unfortunate. So I lost a lot of time there, and this fight overall was pretty bad. right there. Now here's kind of a pretty significant sequence break here. 
um, or kind of a sequence break. So you're supposed to go get the Torvus energy and return it, but all you have to do is just reload this room and you can just leave without worrying about it. <laughs> so that skips getting the Torvus energy. So the fastest way is to activate the bomb slot and activate it again, and then go back to the where you fought Chica and that room is loaded, reloaded. You do not want to get the Torvus energy. That will kill the run. I don't know exactly what happens, but what happens is um, Umas decides to like lock you in certain areas and kind of force you to return the energy and then force you to come back to Temple Grounds, and that pretty much kills the run. So you can't do that. You really don't want to do that. So. Okay, so there's actually a wall crawl here that I could do, and it actually saves a chunk of time. So this room right here, um, I believe it's called Portal Chamber. What you want to do after getting the Sky Temple Key is come back to this room, go to the Light World, and then pop out, go out of bounds, because it's a really nice shortcut, and it cuts out a really annoying detour to Dark Forgotten Bridge. But the problem with it is that I got Grapple Beam. And if I wall crawl and grapple pirates happen, then the game freezes. So I can't afford to do that. Use that shortcut. I don't. It might. I could use that shortcut to. Um. I got trolled by a hunter ring, by the way. I could use that shortcut and pop back inbounds at a different spot, but that, but that takes longer and might kind of defeats the purpose of using the shortcut in the first place. I never timed it. So it might actually be faster to use the shortcut still, but I decided just to play it safe here. Like this game, this run has enough wall crawls as it is. Even though the wall crawl in Portal Chamber is really easy, I don't. It, I'm not quite ready to add another one. But yeah. So I got Dark Visor. I got the Sky Temple Key in Upper Torvis. Now my goal is to go back, to go to Lower Torvis, and get the Sky Temple Key in the dungeon, and then come back, and then take the elevator to Aegon. So basically, the overall route is Torvis, Aegon, Sanctuary, Temple Grounds. Beat the game. So I get this missile tank because my missile ammo is generally pretty strained here, but I kind of wasn't paying attention to how many missiles I had, and I obviously have plenty of missiles. And the reason why I kind of need to worry about missiles a little bit is because I, in Aegon, I need to blow up two super missile doors in a row, and then at, in Temple Grounds, I need to blow up several secret missile doors and another super missile door. So I need to worry a little bit about um, missile management. Now, Grapple Pirates have appeared again. Fortunately, I have Dark Beam. I mean, Dark Visor. So this is not too big of a deal. They're not too they're not too bad once you get Dark Visor. I mean, it still sucks though. So there really isn't much going on here. So pretty boring stuff. Okay, so I guess I can mention this. Um, the 100% category for Metroid Prime 2 is also ran. It's not very commonly ran, ran because it's very long and it's also not as broken. Um, and the reason is... The reason is you can't do ILS in 100% because um, when you do ILS, there is a missile. the missile tank is never there in the room where you lose your items. The missile tank only appears the moment you walk into that room, basically, in balance. The missile tank appears then. So like if there was a way to get out of bounds right there before entering the portal, then yes, you can probably do item loss skip. Um in one hundred percent. And there and there is a way, but that requires screw attack which you don't have at that point in the game, so I honestly think it's nice that ILS isn't used in one hundred percent because that means the two runs are vastly different. You just see a completely different set of tricks in one hundred percent and any percent and it pretty much makes them prac practically different games with the same controls. It's just so. It's just they're just so different. All right, so I kind of messed up getting out of this room here, but whatever. I use light beam because the light beacon stay, lo the light beacon stay activated for twice as longer if you activate them with light beam versus using power beam. So now I'm gonna go back to go to Aegon. So I'm gonna take the Torvis elevator back to Upper Torvis, and then use the secret missiles and go to Aegon.
Okay, this, this, this is a pretty bad mistake. I, for some reason, I thought I was coming out of Sanctuary and I was supposed to go to Temple Grounds to get Light Suit, but I just kind of derped there and I went the wrong way. So that was a, a really stupid mistake there. <laughs> So, yeah. So this is a trick here I use. I, I do a 3 BSJ here. You want to be careful not to be too close to the edge. If you are, then the camera will roll, roll around and think you're trying to boost up the half pipe. That, that skips. That's, that, that's just a very small trick. Normally you're supposed to just use the half pipe and go up and down and waste a lot of time. But that 3 BSJ is several seconds faster. And I get this missile tank because it's kind of safe and why not. This one probably does it costs a little bit of time, probably like a half second to get, but whatever. So right here, what's going on is the room behind a blue door. That room, right there, that room just finished loading. When that, the moment that room loads, the game thinks it's the first time you've entered the dark world. So the game warps you back all the way back here, and it's pretty amazing because you know some sa I didn't know that safe zones must be shot to function apparently, and I didn't know you had to shoot the sparkly energy to re-energize the safe zones. But yeah, so basically you just stand there and wait for that room to load and then the game warps you. And also say hi to Jump Guardian. You do not want to touch the bottom floor of this room or else you activate Jump Guardian. There's a really cool trick used in 100% where you go to Jump Guardian backwards because again, you don't do ILS. And then since you go backwards, you don't activate the fight, but he's still physically there where he spawns. So you can damage him before activating the fight and then make the fight laughably easy. <laughs> So it's pretty funny. So you don't want to, you do not want to touch the center light barrier field there because that activates a fight with Warrior Ing to get an Aegon key, and that wastes a crap ton of time. So you do not want to do that. So yeah, that's the so Aegon Sky Temple key flows pretty well because you kind of get the two Sky Temple keys while going from the elevator to Torvis to the elevator to Sanctuary. So it flows pretty well. And I, I'm kind of careful there to screw attack really high there because there's a lot of invisible platforms and I've bonked on them before and fallen into the center and that's kind of killed runs. So, some to note also, screw attacking is fast. I screw attack whenever I can because screw attacking is faster than walking. I mean, boost balling and grapple beaming is faster than screw attack, but if you can't, if you have to get across a lot of small gaps and such, then it's better, you're better off screw attacking. So right here, this guy temple key here, this guy right here is the reason I get the main power bomb. This guy does not appear until after you get the main power bomb upgrade. This is the only reason you get the main power bomb upgrade, and it's stupid. Like the reason why it probably has to do with this the state of this room changing once you get the main power bomb, because something like that, because you're supposed to use a power bomb to blow up that wall. Which I did while getting light beam, but I had a power bomb early at the time, because I got a power bomb expansion five minutes in the game, so yeah, kind of broke the game. So yeah, I'm done with that part of the game, and now again I'm using this short, really useful shortcut here. Again, that's the reason why I beat Dark Samus one instead of skipping her. And now I'm gonna go straight to Sanctuary. And I may kind of made a dumb mistake here. I forgot your. I forgot that power bomb door is. Um, that power bomb lock is still there because I was kind of used to early violet root, and the early violet root has already blown up that door to get light suit. So I'm not used to blowing that up at this time in the run. All right, so sanctuary. Um, there's a really cool thing in um, sanctuary. So the reason why I do this trick right here. This seems really slow, but the reason I do it is because I hit the loading trigger of the next room early. And the next room takes a while to open, so... Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is go up to the Upper Sanctuary, and I'm gonna do a trick called Spider Skip. So, um... Yeah, I already have Spider Ball, so I don't need to get Spider Ball, but... Without going out of bounds, the only way to get the Sky Temple Key is to go through Spider, spider Guardian fight, blow up a power bomb door, and use the portal behind it. 
So like, there's no way to get get this guy to up key without going out of bounds and skipping the Spider Guardian fight. So like, without this trick, you still have to fight Spider Guardian, even though we have Spider Baller already. So I do a kind of a screw attack to get into the corner here, and I clip out here, land on the pipe, and then kind of wiggle my way here into the ether. And then I kind of morph in place, use a power bomb and unmorph immediately, because remember you fall down in ether. So I'm w so once you power bomb and you shoot the door, then the this room starts loading. So you want to stand in the right, right at the right height for the room to load properly. If you're too low, you're gonna fall all the way down and you're kind of screwed. If you're too high, you're gonna get stuck in the ceiling, and it's kind of salvageable, but you're you're still kind of screwed. Well, I mean, you don't, you're, the run's not really over either way, but you lose a lot of time regardless. All right, so this was a pretty embarrassing mistake here. This is like the first time I missed a screw attack in a long time, and it looks like a tight screw attack, but it's actually pretty easy. Like you just have to do three, three wall spaced screw attacks, and you don't have to really worry about it otherwise. So yeah, this guy temple key here. Now, I've done the first half of Spider Guardian skip. The problem is, um, how do I get back? The only way to go back is through where I fought Spider Guardian, and I never killed Spider Guard. I never got Spider Ball, so there's like a little electric blockade that blocks me. And I've learned the hard way that that even though if you beat Spider Guardian and just don't get Spider Ball, and you come and then you leave the room, then that blockade comes back and you're kind of screwed without using out of bounds. So I had to go back out of bounds to get out of here again. Now, the, I first of all I go back to the light world here and go to the dark world because this. The big open space with this guy's simple key. If I enter that space, then the terminal fall will put me into that space. I do not want that to happen. I need to reset it. So right now, if I hit activate terminal fall, it will act put me on the other side of the room, which is like in a completely different area of this same room. So I'm going to do a screw attack here to clip out of bounds, get into the morph ball tunnel here. I'm very pleased with how this went. I got the second try. So you can kind of jump out there. And then without touching the open space, you activate Terminal of Fall here, and then you spawn right here. And I've skipped Spider Guardian. So. Now, basically, this is pretty boring. I'm just gonna go to Lower, lower Inghive and, um, pretty much go to, go get the other Sky Temple Key. This is pretty boring and straightforward. One thing to note is I need it's, it's a bad habit of mine, but I actually don't check if I have a power bomb drop or not. You always want to make sure you have a power bomb because there's a power bomb door in the way. Okay. See that that's the power bomb door right there. What I intended to do here was do a roll jump, but I kind of <laughs> had a boost already, and I was like, uh, what do I do? I'll just boost off and hope for the best, and I didn't fall down, so that's kind of nice. But what you want to do there is do a roll jump to get across that room quickly. But oh well. So I got absurdly lucky here. I got absurdly lucky. I got three power bomb drops, and that is just amazing. Like, that's just absolutely amazing. Because, um, I don't need to use any more power bombs, but I use power bomb, power bomb save time against Emperor Ing 2 which is the phase where you kind of use spider ball and go around a cocoon or something and you need to blow up all these tentacles power bombs save time and three is perfect three is just enough i mean like i'd rather have four but i don't have enough capacity for four so three is fine three is enough to pretty much kill everything instantly but i but it's really hard to do that now i kind of derped here too i didn't realize there was like an actual floor here when i tried to fall down here so i lost a bit of time there that was a pretty stupid mistake So I've gotten pretty much, I've gotten every Sky Temple key outside of Temple Grounds. So I've gotten, so there's two Sky Temple keys in Aegon, two in Torvis, two in Sanctuary, and three in Temple Grounds. And I've gotten six, all the ones that are not in Temple Grounds. So basically I'm just going to leave. By the way, you can do kind of use a shortcut by using a precise jump here. That jump, you need pretty much need to have maximum height possible for that jump. But yeah, mm, I'm basically going to go back to Aegon. The fastest way to temple back to the Great Temple is to go to Aegon Waste and then use the light, the light beam portal at Aegon Temple to go to the Great Temple. Because now I have light suits, so I can use it. So, 
<laughs> there probably isn't going to be very much for me to say for a while until the last bosses because this part of the game is really boring and it's really straightforward because because the route in Temple Grounds is basically Great Temple, Temple Grounds A. Well, I don't know the exact letters, but you pretty much go to one section of Temple Grounds, get the get the Sky Temple key, go back to Great Temple, go to the second section of Temple Grounds, get the Sky Temple key there, go to Great Temple, go to the third section, get the Sky Temple key there. Like that entire part of the game is so boring and so so many elevators. You just go back and forth between Temple Grounds and Great Temple, and it's really boring. So, like there really isn't much to say. I guess you can kind of just enjoy the music. I don't really know what else I can say for now, so... Yeah. Also, um, having Violet Transitor helps because you can unlock that gate right there. It saves a bit of time. So, I guess I should mention, um, I got Emerald Translator as well because there's there's two main reasons. One, I use it to activate the big elevator in Torfus Temple and to unlock the gate. It's just a faster path overall before fighting Chica. And two, there's a gate in Great Temple I use to go to Temple Grounds quickly, and it's very convenient. So like the, the so Emerald Translator saves a lot of saves a chunk of time in any percent, and you always want to get it. I guess something I can mention is, um, sometimes a lot of people ask, like, how is the difficulty of this game compared to Prime 1 and even Prime 3? And I could probably talk about the speedrunning for the, both of those games as well. So, like, Prime 2 is considered to be the hardest Prime game to run. Maybe even the hardest Metroid game, period. Because it's, as you can tell, there were a lot of really bad mistakes just from, like, a tiny error, or execution error or something, and, like, Prime 2 is really, really punishing. Like, it's, it's crazy how punishing Prime 2 is at least any percent and with the amount of wall crawling there and a lot of randomness too it makes it very very difficult um, Prime 1 is a lot more popular overall and I believe people a lot of people consider it to be the, a lot of uninformed people consider it to be the most broken but as you can tell Prime 2 is far more broken than Prime 1 because you, you can do pretty much anything you want but 
Prime 1 um, is a lot faster paced. And the record for Prime 1 is held by Miles, which is 56 minutes in game time. But again, he's worked on Prime 1 a lot more than Prime 2, so his record for Prime 2 any percent, which is 1 hour 3 minutes, isn't really... He hasn't really worked on it too seriously. So he can probably bring that down to below an hour. Once, if he works on serious single segment attempts and grinded them out more. For Prime 3... Prime 3 is not really a very good speedrun game, because it's very long. Like, an any percent run is roughly 3.5 hours. For, at least for me. And, I, and it has a lot of really boring parts in the game. Spring wall controls are terrible, and the loading times are just absolute crap, and there aren't really any viable sequence breaks in Prime 3. There aren't really many viable sequence breaks. Like, the only trick in Prime 3 is the BSJ. But like the main run, the main thing, reason why I really don't like running Prime Three compared to One and Two is Elysia and loading times. Like those are the two big things. Because Elysia is just abs you see the CC this right here. Imagine this, but you see every room is at exactly the same, and this goes on for about an hour. That's Elysia right there. Um, and loading times just waste so much time in Prime Three, and it just takes forever. Um. And also, I not talk about the viability of sequence breaks. You probably know about Prime 1, but not many people know about Prime 3. The only vi really viable breaks in Prime 3 is Hazard Shield Skip, which is a very easy trick to do. And there's also other pretty notable skips are the Turret Skip, which lets you skip blowing up a turn in Jungle Brio, and Berserker Lord Skip, which lets you skip a mini boss in Lycia. Those three are pretty significant, but they're not like close to as big as pretty much anything at Prime 1 or Prime 2 at all. And there's and there are other really significant skips that require a lot of wall crawling, but they're pre they're so unviable that you will never see them in a speedrun, even in a segmented run. Because like an ideal route for Prime 3 would be to go to Brio, get Grapple Swing, and then basically skip all the Brio by just going straight to Elysia and then wall crawl everywhere. But all the wall crawl like just getting into the secret worlds themselves is just ridiculously hard and impossibly hard. That like, you will waste so much time just trying to get into the secret worlds. Because like there is no set up for it. It's impossibly hard. So like, like it's just so hard that segment run would probably not do it, especially since you have to do the secret worlds for landing site A and concourse ventilation in the same segments. Like, good luck with that. Good luck. Um and I mean, there are two other breaks in Prime 3 that are called Spider Skip. Okay, the main one is Spider Skip. You can skip Spider Ball in Prime 3 because you only need Spider Ball in three spots in the game. One of which is to get Hazard Shield. So, and you skip it, so you don't need it. So there's only two spots you need Spider Ball for, and you can wall crawl past both of them. So that's pretty sick. So you can skip Spider Ball, but again, the secret worlds are pretty difficult. They're not absurdly hard like all the ones in Lycia, but they're pretty difficult. So, and, then there's, there's, and then there's a really cool trick in Prime 3 where you can um, w get out of bounds in... I forgot the room's name. Uh, I forgot the room's name, but you can pretty much go out of bounds near, but in, like two rooms away from Nova Beam, and then wall crawl to the room with Nova Beam, and let the room load around you while you're standing where Nova Beam is, and then get Nova Beam, but let the game kill you. And because the game has checkpoints, you kind of spawn in a different room with Nova Beam equipped, and it saves a buttload of time. But I mean... It's just, there are neat, some neat tricks in Prime 3, but they're just not really that viable. Alright, so I'm mostly done with Sky Temple Keys. There's only one left. And this is the last Sky Temple Key, so once I get this, then I'm just pretty much head off to the final bosses and beat them. And the game's done. So again, norm I usually have to worry about um, missile management here, but I, I'm, I got kind of okay with missile luck for the most part. Like, I'm pretty high on missiles, relatively. So... And 
Prime. This is the last secret door. Secret missiles can miss, and they're pretty annoying. But the nice thing about Prime 2 is that, um, kind of a nice thing at the same time is that if you see if a seeker misses on a door, you have a little bit of time to react and snipe the last lock, and again, the and then the door will still blow open. But I mean, obviously it would have been nice if the seeker missiles worked every time, anyways, in the first place. Okay, so I'm pretty much going off to the last bosses of the game. So, Emperoring, okay, I'll go over this now. Emperoring 1, um, if you want to use Light Beam, a single Light Beam shot takes out each tentacle. And then f exactly four Super Missiles takes out his weak points. Also, fun fact, um, all these caches always give you double missile drops. And I also did not know you can roll under those missile drops, I kind of derped there, but whatever. And then after, once you fall on missiles, those in caches will always give you power bomb drops. Okay, so basically, you want you can one round Embering by using four super missiles or Annihilator Beam. But I skipped the latter, so I have to use super missiles. So this was pretty terrible. You'll see what happens. And I use the scan visor trick there so I can start charging another super missile quickly. So yeah, right there I aimed way too far left because like that that's the super missile. I aimed that super missile too far right and I'm like last PB. And so I got paranoid and aimed it way too far left this time. So like I just ended up being a three run. And this is by far the ugliest and biggest mistake in the entire run. Like this wasted like an entire minute at least. I don't know, I'm kind of using Secret Missiles because why not they home in, but yeah, this is the biggest mistake in the run and I'm very ashamed to, to, to have it here. <laughs> like, and I, that, I thought that missed for a second, but it didn't. Okay, so this phase, you want to carefully time your power bomb so that they just they blow up as many tentacles as par as possible in one power bomb. So, and I, ha I'm, I came here full on power bombs, which is very nice. And that one destroyed four tentacles, which is perfect. So this phase went actually went, went really well. Like, this phase actually went really well for the most part. So now, Embering three. There's kind of some beta left over where he has some kind of leg and a weak point, like below and behind him. Like you can actually see it in his scan log, I think. But they never bothered to remove his weakness to screw attack from that. So you can just screw attack the space below his main body, and you'll do damage to him. So that's how I'm damaging him right now. But this did not go very well at all. Like, this really didn't go very well at all, so I lost a lot of time here, too. But, oh well. I was panicking <laughs> a lot. So, that's basically Embering right there. Terrible. Terrible Embering 1 and 3. But a fantastic Embering 2, which is the one that matters the least, unfortunately. So, okay, so Dark Samus 3 and 4. I'll just call her Dark Samus 4. Basically, what you want to do at the start is do as much damage as possible to Dark Samus, but without making her go into the center. So I don't know how, exactly how much damage that is, but it's I believe it's 1 charged Dark Beam Shot plus 7 uncharged. That does just enough damage, like just below enough damage to make her go to the center. The reason why you don't want her to make her go, go to the center yet is because you want her to use her beam attack, this attack right here. So you want to wait for her to use it, and then the moment she falls back down, you have a chance to screw attack her. And it's, the way screw attack works is that it does damage per frame, so you kind of want screw attack to go through Dark Samus, but unfortunately I aimed a bit too far left, so I bonked off of her and I didn't do very much damage, so that lost a chunk of time there. And this, right here, is pure luck. Whether she gives you phase on or not is pure luck. If she decides to fire a bunch of missiles at you, then, well, GG. You just lost a minute. So this is a pure luck, annoying, frustrating, terrible. 
and um, when she goes back down, I use a super missile, but it doesn't really matter what you use because the damage you can deal to her right when she comes down is capped. Like, you would probably do double that damage if the damage wasn't capped. So it's pretty stupid. So I have Dark Beam equipped because the next time she goes down, a charged Dark Beam shot is enough to make her go back up immediately. But yeah, this is just pure luck, and I'm getting really bad luck. So I lost a lot of time here. And oh yeah, it doesn't really matter what beam you use to shoot the base on back at her. Technically, light beam would save it some frames because it homes in. But whatever, it doesn't really matter. And I'd rather not risk missing. So I expected this last shot. I expected her to take two more hits to die. But I was insanely happy when I found when she took she went down after one, only one more shot. So that was just freaking amazing. And time. That's the run right there. So that's my one hour eighteen minute run. Or in real time, or roughly one hour thirty-six minutes in real time. So Unfortunately, Prime 2 kind of sucks with the ending because you can't skip the last cutscene, nor can you skip the credits. In Prime 1, you can you can speed through the credits. In Prime 3, you can skip most of the ending cutscenes. Prime 2, you get the kind of the, the worst of both worlds. So overall, you can tell this run has a lot of bad mistakes in it. But it was Prime 2 again is no notoriously very hard and punishing, and it was a lot of work for me to just get a run, let alone beat beat my goal, which is 1 hour 20 minutes. And overall, this run had a lot of bad parts, but it also had a lot of good to it as well. So, I'm hoping that this commentary was very helpful and informative to both people who just want to watch this for fun, and also people who kind of want to learn more about the game and even speedrun it themselves. So, um, as a, um, for the most part, I forgot what I was going to say, but Oh yeah, for the most part, if anyone plans on learning this game, you can always just go on M2K2. Just pretty much go on Metroid2002.com and click the forums, and you can go on M2K2, make an account there, and ask questions and stuff. Like, most of us, pretty much all of us are willing to help out and stuff. If anything, like, you, and some people might not be responsive and stuff, you can PM me if you want, and I'll be willing to help out whenever I can. Um, what I don't recommend is following this route, because this route is not very new-friendly, and you will probably hate yourself within the first five minutes. <laughs> Like, you really don't want to use this route when you start out. <laughs> you, like, this, like Miles' route is the route you don't want to touch. You don't want to touch this route either, because this route is basically the same route as Miles's, except I get grapple beam, he doesn't. Like, this is, like, what I recommend doing is get early, like, some root things I would recommend is early violet, early violet, um, spider skip is not too bad, so I recommend learning spider ball skip. I recommend getting early Violet Translator, and Annihilator Skip is kinda iffy. If you're really experienced but good with Aether Jumping, I recommend learning Annihilator, Annihilator Skip. If not, then you're better off fighting Quadraxis. Um, and obviously, don't skip Grapple Beam, cause, or else you're gonna hate yourself. So, yeah. I like how Samus still has a Dark Beam equipped right there. You can tell by the purple shape, purple coloring of her arm, arm cannon. So, unfortunately, no ending because I am not at I've been running this game for roughly one year, and I want to sh make sh give my shoutouts number one to Miles, because without Miles, I would not have had a reference. I would not have felt any help at all, and like he was the one who really who shaped up a lot of the recent bindings in this game, and um, he's really helped me countless times 
running the game and learning the game. He's the one who taught me how to wall crawl in the first place. He's the one who, ev pretty much everything I've said in this commentary, I've learned from Miles himself. So like, I strongly recommend subscribing to his YouTube, following his Twitch account. He is fantastic at this game. And, um, like seriously, thank you so much, Miles, for help helping me to learn this game and Prime 1 as well. And he's been incredibly helpful. And he is amazing at Prime 1 and 2, so thank you very much. Um, I also want to give shoutouts to, I guess, everyone else who's run Prime 2. Mask Kirby, it's personal to Mr. Speedrun, and people who are also learning the game. Raphael Robo, Robo Timps. <sighs> I have a feeling I'm forgetting someone. Hopefully not. If I forgot you, I'm sorry. But pretty much being there for support. Everyone in the Metroid speedrun community in general, even though people who don't speedrun Prime 2, I want to give shoutouts to them as well for supporting me through all my streaming attempts, because I've been very frustrated at times, but I've learned to be really more and more patient. Even though I lose runs near the end, I've learned to be patient and just keep going and don't let don't let impatience get to me. Don't let my frustration get to me. Just be patient. So, uh, that, thank God for that patience, and thank you for everyone for supporting me. And thank you for watching this, more or less, because it was fun commentating, and I hope that this was very useful to you, and I thank everyone, all my Twitch viewers, and everyone on YouTube for supporting me as well. So, yeah. And a lot of, also, like, I don't know too much about the history behind running this game, but I do know that Sparky and DJ Granola are two ex- Prime Runner players, the old Prime Runner players from like long time ago that shaped up a lot of what you see today. Like yeah, you don't really see as much out of bounds. Like you didn't see as much out of bounds back then, but a lot of the more inbounds tricks and stuff is thanks to them as well. So shout outs to Sparky, Bartender Sparky and DJ Granola. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of other people who ran the game back then, but I I don't know my history too well, so I'm kinda derping on that. But yeah, and I want to emphasize again, this is not record. This is 15 minutes away from the record. Just to show show you how much of a gap there is between me and Miles. Um, this is technically a second best record, but I do I think I for right now, as of the time of this recording, I kind of want to take a break from Prime to any percent, only do it in races, and then eventually, maybe I'll start doing gra grapple skip with the wall crawl. We'll see what happens. And I do eventually want to break 115. Like, I can save easily 3 or 4 minutes just from execution errors, but just finishing a run on its own is really hard, let alone a good run. So, it's pretty difficult. It's pretty tough. And I do need to take a break, and I'm pretty happy with this personal best overall. I will improve it, but I think I'm okay with it for now. So, yeah. Waiting for these long credits. I don't know what else to say. Um, shoutouts to SDA for pretty much introducing to speedrunning in the first place. As I discovered SDA years and years and years ago, and I was able. To, I watched a lot of runs, and I got more involved in the community starting like two years ago, roughly or something. And I started kind of branching out a lot more to like MTK2 and the Mega Man community. Some Kirby as well, hence my name, Kirby Master. And SRL, of course. And it's pretty much everyone's that supported me a lot. So, yeah. Thanks a lot, everyone, for watching, and this is my time. 1 hour, 18 minutes in game time with a percentage of 25%. So, that is the mission finale, and I'll see you guys next mission then. Thanks a lot.